Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm taking a look at Coimbra, which is a Euro-style dice drafting game by Virginia Geely and Flamina Brasini. Now this uh, design duo actually designed one of my favorite, well actually my favorite game at the time of this recording, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Now this game does have some similarities but also some quite distinct differences as well because this one has the mechanic or the mechanism of dice drafting in it. Um, it's a Euro star game that uses dice which I naturally really like so again my expectations were very very high. Two to four players takes around 90 to 120 minutes to play. Um, I think the box has a little bit shorter than that but from my experiences that is the kind of time frame it takes. So as I said Fundamentally, it's a dice drafting, it's a kind of engine building game, um, and you're using these dice to draft different cards, to climb these different tracks, give you kind of um, instant powers, and I said as to, to build an engine as well. But the, the dice drafting is what really makes this game kind of unique, and it's the way it uses dice drafting as well is very, very intuitive, or very, very kind of um, innovative because not only do the dice um, kind of pips on them, obviously you've got your standard D6s from one to six, but also the color of the dice is also very, very important. So fundamentally, you're gonna basically take turns drafting these dice um, and placing them on these different kind of um, rows. So one of those rows um, gives you kind of these bonuses um, and that goes kind of from the lowest number all the way to the highest number in order of priority. Whereas the other three columns you're gonna to use to buy cards. And those cards are going to kind of make you climb these four different tracks, um, all relating to a different kind of currency. You've got one track, which is kind of your merchant stack, which um, makes you kind of um, gain income or, or gold. One of them lets you gain military points. One of them lets you move your kind of um, merchants around the board, collecting these different bonuses. And the other one gains you purely victory points. And as I said, all those different tracks are linked to a different kind of die color. So you've got like your oranges, your grays, your greens, and your purples, I believe. Um, so as I said, you, those cards um, not only give you um, ways to climb those tracks, and they, they vary in strength as well. So some might let you just climb um, a track once or some do it three times. Some give you one-off abilities, some give you game end abilities, some give you engine abilities such as like gaining cards for cheaper or every time you draft a certain type of color of a card you'll get like a bonus and, and the like. So you've got lots to think about there. But the cool thing is not only are those higher pips going to um, give you priority in drafting the cards that you want, it also means you're going to have to pay the uh, relative cost as well. So if you're drafting purely sixes all the time, you better hope that you have the money to pay for those sixes because as I said, it's gonna be very, very expensive to do so. So you're gonna really have to weigh up those decisions on, um, you know, can I pay for it? How badly do I need, need those cards? But also, what track do I need to um, gain the benefit of due to the color I'm drafting? Um, very, very, very clever. Um, I, I, I think it's actually, um, a mechanism that I haven't seen before and I don't even know if another game uses it whatsoever. So I'm um, really, really impressed by the kind of innovativeness of it. And it is so, so important as well because the game does kind of, it's broken down into four rounds and each of those four rounds you just draft three die. So, um, or three dice. So the, the, um, the importantness of gaining the right dice is very, very kind of paramount into, into winning or not because you can't just spend all your time getting gold when you, know, you need the other resources as well. And all those different kind of routes as well, they're very, very, very balanced. Um, and obviously as you're climbing these tracks, when you come to um, cashing in or, or come to gaining the reward of the colors of the dice, the higher you up on that track, the more reward you're going to get. To say I was right at the top of the, um, of the kind of victory point stack and uh, I draft the green die, I'm gonna get a very, very big reward uh, in terms of victory points as compared to somebody who's right at the bottom of that track. So as I said, that dual conflicting um, interest is very, very interesting and really where the game um, you know, flourishes. Um, also, it's very, very satisfying when you do get your engine going because you can really um, get a lot of kind of combinations and, you know, your engine really, really getting powerful. And um, it's very, very satisfying when you do kind of play to your strengths and you can really kind of pull away um, if you do play that way. Really, really like it. Um, the, the choices of getting those cards is very, very important as well because as I said, if you're not getting into this top spot, someone's going to take the ones you want. You're going to have to readjust your plan. And, um, you know, 
deciding on whether you want to, um, you know, take those one-off benefits, um, whether you want to, you know, contribute to your engine, whether you want to um, really focus on those end game points is, is equally as important because, you know, all those different strategies seem very, very well balanced. And, um, you know, as with all Euro games, you want to play to maximum efficiency. Um, as, uh, in terms of strategies and balance of that, I, I think it's really, really good. I mean, I've got no complaints whatsoever um, from what I've played. I've not played this game a whole, lot, a whole bunch, but I've played it a few times now. And, um, you know, all those strategies seem very, very well balanced. The different tracks seem really good. Um, what I should have mentioned as well is the higher up those tracks you get, you're going to get points um, depending on who is at the top of those tracks, who's at the kind of the middle and who's at the bottom. So, um, you know, it is just equally as important or maybe not equally as important, but it is important to try and stay at the top of those tracks because there is a bunch of end game victory points you can get um, if you do focus on that. Um, so not only that is um, the, the variability of the game is very, very cool as well because um, the... So basically the cards are going to be pretty much, um, you know, well they are actually divided into four rounds exactly so you're going to see the same cards every, every game you play this. But um, the tracks kind of have um, the tiles where you score the points, is they're variable so basically every game the different tracks are going to be worth different points depending on how high, up, high you are up them so that's going to kind of change the little focus of the, focus of the game a bit. Um, also on the map where you're traveling around to get these benefits such, such as like end game bonuses or um, you get these rosettes which kind of um, contribute to set collection end game bonuses or um, you know maybe they might just give you a bunch of coins or a bunch of military strength stuff like that. Um, they're very very variable and not all of them go out on the on the board straight away. Um, so you've got a bit of vari variability there and you've got different kind of routes you want to go to and prioritize in different ways. Um, and also the game comes with these different kind of voyages as well, which are kind of, uh, I think there's like five or six of them that come out on the board. And um, they, they're quite expensive, but they contribute very, very strongly to end game scoring. And you only kind of get one opportunity each round to invest in one of those voyages. And there are other ways to, to do more of them, but the, the fact that only six of them come out, but there's absolutely a ton of them in the box, really does spice up the game. And again, add that kind of modular variability, which um, just increases the replayability and longevity of the game immensely. So very, very impressed with that. And the game flows very, very smoothly from one phase to the next. Um, I love the kind of importance of um, player order or initiative because you basically, um, you can collect these crowns which will, um, basically the person with the most crowns will be the first player in the next round. But the game kind of naturally um, builds in a kind of a function where uh, whoever goes last in the previous round automatically gets a couple of crowns to contribute to their complete value. So they've got a better chance of coming earlier in the turn order the next round. So really, really like that player initiative um, kind of me mechanism. Um, the game definitely doesn't outstay its welcome or anything like that, despite being, you know, on the on the 90 to 120 minutes time frame. I think it fits that really, really nicely. Um, it it doesn't lose your interest. It definitely feels like you're constantly engaged. You really get stuck into the game, um, especially as you get things going. Um, so yeah, no complaints there at all. Again, with, with player, player uptime as well, it's no issue whatsoever. Um, because you're doing a very small chunk of the game at each time, um, you're not sitting around waiting for other players to take their long turns. Um, maybe a slight little bit prone to uh, AP or encourages that, but no real issues whatsoever. I'm really nitpicking there. Um, I said replay, replayability, excellent. Player interaction is an interesting one in this one. Um, obviously, you've got the kind of quite passive um, interaction in terms of people snatching the dice you want in front of you, um, really have to make you adjust and stuff like that. But in terms of getting to places quickest or investing in these voyages, there's really no kind of interaction there at all because um, basically there's no punishment to getting there quicker or after another player. Like a lot of these Euro games, you kind of, if someone gets to something first, they get it for cheaper than if someone goes there second. Whereas this one, everybody pays the same fee. Um, there's no kind of real competition or um, you know aggressiveness or that race in this one at all. So you can really kind of do things at your own pace and not have to worry about beating other players there too, to those spots, which personally I really like. Um, I, I don't mind either way, to be honest, but um, I think it's nice sometimes when you do have that and you don't have that constant or, or that other kind of pressure to get in other places quicker. Um, I love the look of the game. I mean, for a pretty themeless, almost dry Euro game, the game looks really, really pretty. It's very bright. The kind of character illustrations are really nice. The symbology is good. 
Um, yeah, no complaints there at all. Um, very, very kind of a ball that really pops and it looks really, really nice. The dice are really good quality. Um, no complaints about the production whatsoever. Um, comes with these very, very nice little dice holders where you basically, when you're drafting your dice, you put them in your colored dice holder and it kind of represents which dice you've drafted. So really, really functional, um, no complaints whatsoever. And I really like the look of the game. As I said, in terms of the theme, I, I don't really understand what the theme is. It's very, very abstracted. Um, but again, it's a Euro game, um, I don't care. So um, setup and teardown time, again, no real issues there. I mean, you're just gonna be shuffling the decks and um, placing the cards out. I mean, it has to be done every round, but no real problem there. Setting up the different tiles on the board takes a little bit of time, but nothing really too strenuous. So um, again, no complaints whatsoever. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, this is another spectacular game. It, it's a really, really amazing game by these Italian designers. They just keep um, hitting one after another for me. Uh, they just really do hit that sweet spot for me. I love all their games. Um, this is a pretty um, medium weight game. It's not too, too much um, in terms of complexity. It's not too complex but the, the decision space is really there, really enjoyable. Um, some really tight, you know, t tense decisions you have to make on whether you're gonna kind of risk coming second and not getting the cards you want, but, you know, balance that with the money you're spending, balance that with the dice, you're, the color die you're drafting. Really, really cool. And um, you can get some really satisfying engine builders going, which I really, really enjoy in board games. Um, I said, if you tried any of their games before, such as Lorenzo or um, you know Grand Austria Hotel, those kind of games, you're really gonna like this one. Really recommend you check it out. Um, I know a lot of people kind of say this is very similar to Lorenzo, but for me, it has a very different feel to it. Um, definitely, um, you know, space on the shelf for both of these. Um, and I wouldn't just say that. I mean, I, I don't like having games that are too similar and these two feel very different to me. And um, yeah, no quibbles whatsoever on about keeping both of them. This is definitely staying on my shelf. I think it is a really amazing game and one that I highly recommend if you like your medium weight Euros, if you like games that use dice, if you like dice drafting, if you like engine building, this is one definitely to check out. A real, real uh, success of 2018, this game. Um, Coimbra, a fantastic game amazing game. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of quick review of Coimbra. Um, if you have, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.